Yeah. Very big. So you guys might hear uh, pentavalent carbon. A lot of yes. prospects like use that term. Pentavalent. Ooh, that's a good one. Bam. <clears throat> Dropping it. I like it. Knowledge. Yeah. So this is not in the P, Y, or P, Z orbital. You cannot resonate. Oh, you're, you're still frozen? <laughs> <laughs> you have to be in a P orbital if you're going to resonate. Two because it has one pi bond, right? One pi bond. Yeah. Yeah. So this one, I'm going to yes. save the math part and just draw it out for you guys. And I'm going to use the highlighter. Here we go. So guys, um, plot twist. Remember how we said this one's really complicated? So some of these are not quite right because what we said earlier, you have to look up yeah. the resonance. And me and Jason kind of know that like, when we see this, like an alarm is going off. Yeah, so when we see lone pairs and pi bonds, that's like, boom, we, we know something fishy is happening. Yes. Our, your professor's trying to trick us. Let's start with the left nitrogen. Can it resonate, that lone pair? Yeah. I think we can, because if, if I'm thinking about this correctly, I think we can take those lone pairs and we can skadoosh mm -hmm. them in the middle. If we did mm -hmm. that and left alone, we, the nitrogen would explode. But since we have a pi system yeah. next door, we can skadoosh those and push those on the other nitrogen. Gotcha. So you're saying move this over here, and you're yes. saying skadoosh this one of these bonds. Yes. Okay. Onto the onto the next one. Okay. So guys, that's this. exactly that what I meant too. right there. What you put. Right okay. There. Yeah. So you use right. black for the nitrogen. Nitrogen. Use. Yeah. How's that? Um. Yep. So I'm gonna leave yeah. since your arrow's down below. I'm gonna leave this one here, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my purple, a, and I'm gonna yeah. drop that down here like this. To highlight that awesome. one. Mm -hmm. This one over here, if I'm not mistaken, should still have a set of lone pairs on it. So we can leave those. Yeah. And then this one moves. So now that's a single bond. We won't do the charges yet. All right. So we're going to drop our purples up here. We're going to go that, 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 and that. There. What charges yeah. are we going to have here? Yeah, exactly. So if I remember correctly from our diazomethane that we did before, I remember mm -hmm. the middle nitrogen didn't change. So that should still be a positive. Right? Yeah, exactly. It lost electrons but it gained mm -hmm. electrons simultaneously. Yes. I'm gonna drop a red positive right Perfect. there. Perfect. So I think the left one here, if we look at this, we took electrons and we started shoving it to form a bond. So that nitrogen lost an electron, mm -hmm. which to me, since it started negative and now it lost it, it should be neutral. And then if we look at the one on the right, the electrons went on the nitrogen. So it gained mm -hmm. an electron, which means that if it went from a minus one, it should be a minus two. Yeah, which is like super rare in orco, but yes. azide is one of the few molecules where like you, you can kind of do it. It's mm -hmm. not great. Doesn't really exist in that form for very long. This yeah. is this is the more stable form. All right, and then Jason, what makes this mm -hmm. even more complicated is that yes. there's another resonance structure we can do, guys. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we started with the left nitrogen, but you can also start with your right nitrogen. And since yes. the molecule is symmetrical, we can basically do the same thing, right? Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, we are going to do the perfect arrow for you, and then yeah. you did. <laughs> yeah, I can see it now. Perfect on all three okay, cool. life devices I have. <laughs> <laughs> That's important. Look here, and then we'll go. We're going to have our three sets on this side this time. We are going to have our one set right there, and now let's fill in our colors there. How's that? Yeah, that's great. Yeah. And then, guys, so we just basically do the same thing, but just from the other side. So, so I think the middle nitrogen is going to be positive again. And we can kind of look at this as almost like a reverse. So now the nitrogen with three lone pairs with the green on it is going to be minus two. And then the one that is on the right-hand side is going to be neutral. Yeah, exactly. All right, guys. So then next, we, we're almost done with this video. We have to do the figure out what the actual hybridization are. All right, Jason, let's do this. What is this nitrogen's hybridization? That one, if I look at that at face value, Frank, to me, it face looks value. like it's SP3. Yeah, no pi bonds. So SP3. No pi bonds. But that's kind of fishy, right? Because this one up here, it we, is. when we did the analysis earlier, is SP2. Yeah, when you encounter this scenario, when you have two possible hybridizations, always go for the lower one because that's going to be the true nature of it. So this, what about the central one, Jason? So that one has two pi bonds. So I'm thinking mm -hmm. that's three minus two, which is one SP. SP, you got it. Good maths. Good maths. And I'm this thinking one that one's SP as well, because it's the same thing, right? SP? That's weird, right? Yeah, SP. Yeah. It is weird. Yeah, you're right. It's SP, because it's got two pi bonds. Yeah. Yeah, so that's why I love this equation here. It, it'll always work, as long as you so can... So, Frank, this is, this is super yeah. weird now. So what's the hybridization for all the atoms? Well, we're not done yet, because we have to analyze this one. Yeah, so this left one would look, quote-unquote, SP3. The central one... It looks SP3, still, you know, yeah. Yeah, and this one will be SP as well. Okay, so then we have like a whole bunch of things happening then. So who do, yeah. what do we listen to? According to equation, it's SP3 minus the max number of pi bonds. The right nitrogen, we have SP2 in the original structure. And our mm -hmm. resonance, it went up to SP3. So we can't mm -hmm. trust that. 
And then this yeah. one went down SP. So we actually need to, this is the true hybridization of that nitrogen. That's crazy. Wow. Yeah. So I'm going to X this out with red, X this out with red, and then I will circle this with red, but I'll put a green check mark next to it. It's clear. The central nitrogen here, we got SP, mm -hmm. SP, and SP. So that's awesome. The, that, that dude never lied to us. That dude that, was Yeah, that was always honest. He was solid. Um, and now the left nitrogen, we got SP2 here. SP and SP3. So what do we listen to, Jason? What's what's the true nature of it? I'm gonna I'm gonna say the lowest one, SP. SP. Yep. I'm gonna circle this one, X this one, Perfect. X this one, nice. and then just to play around because I'm okay with change now. Thanks to you, Jason. I'm gonna do a little <laughs> highlighting. It's perfectly filled in. There's no white space at all. I know. It's it is a perfect circle highlighted. So that's orbital circular. Is that a, is then that an apple? <laughs> circle. It's a perfect circle. Okay, got it. All right, so <laughs> I know the board looks a little crazy, guys, but bear with us. So this left nitrogen is SP. The central mm -hmm. nitrogen is also SP. Yeah. And the right nitrogen is SP as well. P. All nice. three nitrogens are, are SP hybridized, as opposed to alene, which was SP2, SP, and SP2. We're going to draw out the molecular orbitals, OK? Mm -hmm. AKA sigma network, pi network, nitrogen, nitrogen, nitrogen. Here we go. And then there's basically there's three resin structures, Jason. Also, Chip, if you're watching this video, make sure you hit pause and try this out first before I reveal the answer. I don't need a stinking pause button. <laughs> nah. Those are good all nitrogens, right. Frank. I like the, it's Thank like you. a nice copy. Um, all right, so we got all three here. Now we got to set up our pie system first because easiest to do the pie, right, Jason? Mm -hmm. It is. All right, so then, yeah, this is this part. <laughs> We got stuck, guys. We actually got stuck when we tried to plan this video because we we're like, "What's actually? Yeah. How does it? How does it actually look like?" So, yes. Jason, how does it look like? Okay, let me see here. I'm yeah, you, yeah. This. Let's start with the top one. So we'll do the, we'll do this resin structure. That might be the easiest since it's okay. like alene. I'm gonna put this yeah. right there underneath that blue. So I'm mm -hmm. on top of it. This yeah. one, and then yep. I'm gonna do this Looks one good. here and this one here. Yeah. Got Go it. ahead and drop in the dots. Perfect. And then just like alene, this left nitrogen this time should have mm -hmm. another pi bond. So, and yes. it has to be not the PY, it has to be PZ this time. All right, cool. Let's put that in. So this one, we'll yeah. put this one here, and then we'll put this one here, yeah. and then we'll yep. make the so little... we're just more or less, yep, same thing, compare contrasting with alanine. Right there. Um, pretty straightforward. Nothing new information here. There, um, and the dots. It, yep, inside the bond, it has to be just, what, one electron, one electron, right? If we're, if we're yep. doing a bond. Yep, okay. And then I'll use the purple, and I do the, the whoosh. Whoosh. The whoosh, the whoosh, and the whoosh. So nothing's new there, guys. Now the new stuff is well. There's no hydrogen, yeah. so we. I mean, we could have the electrons in the sp two orbitals mm -hmm. just like this, right? But we know that in reality, it's not sp two hybridized. Even in this yeah. resonance form, in the location of the electrons have to be as if it was sp hybridized nitrogen. It's sp hybridized, so you can only have two sp orbitals. Okay, because mm -hmm. that's the way SP works. And an S goes in, a P goes in, two orbitals go in, two orbitals get pumped out. At this point, you're really graduated. This is like the highest level that we'll be doing. We've got to put everything that we did in 1A and 1B together so far. <laughs> we talked about earlier, it's going to be linear in geometry because it, there's only two, S, two SP orbitals you can work with. One going to the right, one going to the left. There we go. Um, yep. It's a lone pair that's existing in the orbital. Jason, can you use purple and pop in two lone pairs? Uh, yeah, one I sure lone can. pair for me. One lone pair, got it. All right, so right yeah, put in one and there. yeah, one lone pair there. Exactly. Got it. And then, so let me also use red to help them out so they can follow along. Okay. This is the first py orbital that Jason set up, just like with our alene. Nothing's mm -hmm. too crazy different there. On the left side, same thing. Let's use this to set up the pz to indicate the pz orbital. All right. Then this is yeah. the lone pair Jason popped in there. Okay. Now this bottom one, I'll use yeah. green. That might Good help idea. actually. We use green for consistency's sake. Um, there we go. That lone pair, where is it? Because it is not here. Mm -mm. It's not here. It's not here. Mm -hmm. There's only one other axis. Here. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so it's in. The, it's actually going to be in the PZ orbital. Yeah. So I, what? Jason, can you want to draw or you want me to draw it? Yeah, I can draw it. Absolutely. Yeah. We're going to draw it. And then, here. so it's really cool, guys. The lone pair is inside the PZ orbital. It's like crazy. Yeah. Let me get my two electrons in there. Yeah. There. Oh, actually, there. Jason, you use, use blue for Go the back. orbital. Yeah. Oh, blue? Stick okay. to blue since we're doing PZs right now. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Oh, I see. Got you. Got you. Okay. Yeah. All right. There's that one mm -hmm. there. 
and then we'll get yeah. it to electron. And then yeah. use purple for the lone pair. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Got it. Yeah. So that's what's happening, guys. That lone pair is sitting inside its PZ orbital, um, which is why and how it can do this resonance. If it's not in the P, Y, or PZ orbital, you cannot resonate. Oh, Are you're back. still frozen? <laughs> You have to be in a P orbital if you're going to resonate. So yeah. these lone pairs have to be in the P orbital. Okay. I'm going to leave out uh, the whoosh here because this electron, this pair of electrons um, currently is not in a pi bond with this orbital. So just kind of bear with me here. Okay. It's going to be a little wacky. And then Jason, this lone pair that's, yeah. so I'm going to turn that to green. There you go. Okay. Yeah. So that's this one guys. And then okay. we have this bond here, which now we use purple to indicate that one electron in that orbital. Okay, and then same thing that the central nitrogen has another orbital coming out to meet up with it, and that's that's the sigma bond right there. So I know it's a lot that's going on, so really bear with us. I apologize for like the craziness there, but that's a sigma bond, and it's gonna be a nitrogen sp nitrogen sp sigma bond. Okay, nice. Yeah, despite it being quote unquote sp two here and like all the craziness. Okay. Mm -hmm. Remember their true identities. SP, SP, SP. They're all SP. Yes. Okay. All of them. Yeah. Yes. And these lone pairs are going to be sitting in an SP orbital. So then what we, what's left is this, this sigma bond right here, Jason. Yes. Um, that has to be uh, what orbital, what orbitals must be making up the sigma bond right here. That one's going to be an SP. SP to an SP. Yeah, so this is the same dealio, pretty straightforward. Uh, it's a sigma non, or NSP, NSP sigma bond. Yeah, so we're all set there. Yes. Um, do now we need, we do we need an orbital for the other lone pair on that nitrogen? Exactly. So this, yeah, let me do this one first. Okay. That'll make okay. more sense. So this SP, SP orbital is right here. Yes, that's where the lone one. pairs are. This one here, the one that's resonating, yeah. is resonating. <laughs> so it has to be in a yeah. what orbital? <laughs> That's going to be in a P, and exactly. specifically a P Y. Yeah, nice, Jason. Nice yeah. job. So lone pairs there. Cool. I think we're all set. Mm -hmm. All right. So guys, this is what's happening with azide. Oof. Very cool Very molecule. Long but it's a little bit complicated, Ali. Ali. Very cool molecule, looks exactly the same, but very, very complicated. Super complicated. Like, holy crap. And guys, I don't think I really want to do these two because uh, yeah. I don't think we really need to do it, honestly. I don't think we need them, yeah. Yeah, I want to just, just do it for funsies and then you know post your work down below. I don't know, email mm -hmm. us. Maybe we'll, we'll cover it in a future podcast, but yeah, I'm tired. <laughs> yeah, I think one thing was good. Yeah, and this is, this is the major resonance contributor. This is the main yeah. thing you want to focus on. Sure. All right, next, Jason, chem draw. I am going to drop in your chem draw art. Okay, okay, you ready? I think we did it a little differently. That doesn't mean we're wrong. It just does not do differently. No. That's right. We want to show them yes. options. Like we did it this way in our drawings, but then the yeah. camera looks this way, right? Yeah. Exactly. That's all yeah. we're trying to do. That's right. Options. Yeah. yeah. So when we planned it, we had, yeah, we just set up our PY orbitals first on the left side. So essentially we just, if you pick up this um, azide, you know, just yeah. pick and it go. up. Yeah. And just go. Whoosh, exactly. And then you get this. Same. Yeah. Same thing. Neither one is wrong. But both are right. That's what's important. Yes, they are both correct. Yeah. There you go. Okay. <laughs> All right. Perfect. And then we already filled in the electrons for you guys to help out. Yeah. And this is the whole Jason thing they talked about earlier. He wants. Uh, we like oriented, so you can see like what the PZ orbital actually are positioned. Mm -hmm. But on the test, same thing. Draw like this because I don't think your props will accept this. Alrighty. So that's part one B, guys. Be sure to check out part one C, which has has what Jason. So what's in part C? Hey, it's harder exam level problems with cyclical pi systems. There we go. So if you like this video, make sure you like it down there. As per usual, subscribe so you get updated when we do post more crazy stuff. And of course, hit the bell button because bells are meant to be rung. Help support us by buying us either a latte or, or a boba. On Patreon, depending on what tier of patron you want to be, you can help, uh, you can, well, you can definitely support us. <laughs> yes, you, you can, can. You can. Submit questions. That'd be nice. <laughs> You can see the questions for us to answer on this podcast. You can also get access to the backstage behind the scenes. Jason has a Kajabi course for Oregon. Yes, one. I do. I sure do. You should check mm -hmm. it out if you like what I'm about. Mm -hmm. You're going to work with Jason or me or yeah. Carolyn. Yeah. You can reach out for tutoring through orgomadeeasy.org. Mm -hmm. And also, of course, yeah. 
always, special thanks to Chip Salenza, genetics professor yes. at Boston University. Hey, Chip, make sure you hit that pause button.